What's up everybody? Jack here, and today I'm going to make you a video about eBay. This is going to do two things. One, we're going to talk about how you can physically source stuff off of eBay in a way where you are identifying scenarios where sellers are making mistakes that lead to less visibility to their auctions, which lead to items selling for less than their going price. There are ways that you can find these situations, and it's an inherent part of being able to source stuff off of eBay, because there's a lot of different business models you can use where you are acquiring goods from eBay or other sources, and then doing something to them, and then reselling them, okay? One of the things that I like to do with this is resell Game Boys. So the Nintendo Game Boy was one of the most successful consoles of all time. If you look at an individual model, there were multiple different Game Boys, right? But the this model that you see right here, the DMG01, this model had about 50 million units produced. So to this day, it's very easy to find Game Boys that have really simple to fix problems. You have an abundance of material and a growing interest in retro content in general. What you find in the retro gaming scene is that the prices of almost all retro games are just slowly increasing. And this has been consistently true for a long time. Like if you're in the game and you're looking at prices of stuff and you stop and you look five years later with video games, anything particularly to do with Nintendo, they're not going to be cheaper than when you were interested in it. And, and me, for example, I just got back into looking at a video game, uh, this income stream, and I'll talk more about how I'm doing that in a minute. Um, I just got back into doing this, and I'm already seeing that the, the cost to get a fixable broken Game Boy is about ten dollars more I, I used to reliably be able to do it for thirty dollars whereas now it's more reliably done at 40 bucks so this means that when i sell them i have to change the strategy that i was using and i'll get more into that in the back end of this video because for now i just want to talk to you about how you can identify when sellers on ebay are making mistakes okay so let's talk about the first one titles what you want is to identify the item you're looking for. I want to get these Game Boys, and I want to get them cheaper than what they're worth. Well, of course, everyone wants that. How do I find situations on eBay where I might get Game Boys for cheaper than they're worth? Okay? Well, first we need to identify what the default title for a Game Boy listing is. Okay? So anytime eBay, uh, anyone sells something on eBay, eBay is going to try and guess what item you're selling and match it to a UPC code. And this is going to result in like a default title, basically. And a lot of people will use that default title. So now what we want is we want to find a listing that uses the default title, but doesn't explain that they have games that are included as well. Because there's another rule, a general rule of thumb when it comes to physical products on eBay. And that's that if something sells individually, like if, if one game sells, that is the situation where the game is most likely to sell for its value. The more items you add to a listing, the lower the amount of people who are interested in every specific part of that listing, right? So in general, you will get better deals if you're buying listings that contain multiple items because the more items and the more different these items are, people aren't thinking, oh, that's worth this much, that's worth this much, and that's worth this much. People are thinking, I care about that and that. I'll pay this much plus this much. That's my number. So the more items you add to that pool, the less likely you are to identify with a buyer who wants everything and will pay you full value. So this is just a general rule of thumb, okay? You should target listings that contain multiple items because you're going to get more value. And in my case, I'm going to be reselling these Game Boys for a lot more than I paid for them after a, like a thorough cleaning process and some other testing and stuff, right? And they're going to be included with one game. So I'm, I'm actually going to be violating this. Um, and I'm not saying, this, this is the general rule of thumb, okay? It's not something you always have to listen to, but in in general, if you're talking about auctions on eBay, the ones for individual things are going to sell closest to their market value. 
the ones, the auctions with a lot of different things are going to sell for less than their market value. And if there are things included in the auction that aren't communicated properly, that is the scenario where they are most likely to sell for less than their market value. Okay, so let's get into that because this is an example. This person is actually paying eBay, God knows how much more, to use their sponsored listing thing, right? And they're using the default title. You can see that there is a photo that includes the game, but there's nothing in the title to indicate that it comes with the game. You see the game's alleyway, there's photos, and then if you scroll down, you can read the description. And it includes the game. So this seller just neglected to put that information in the title, and that increases the chance that other people aren't going to jump on it. In this case, this is a buy it now listing, so it doesn't really matter because uh, you're not going to be able to get it for less than the asking price. Whereas with auctions, if you play your cards right, you can do that, right? So, for example, another common mistake that sellers will make is they'll put something like this, like a Nintendo Game Boy with 10 games. And you look at the games. This isn't really a mistake because none of these games are that high profile. Some Nintendo Game Boy games, such as Pokemon games or Zelda games or some of the Mario games and some others, are worth $20 to $30. So they, an individual game can be worth almost as much as one of these Game Boys. But none of these games are in this situation. But you can find listings where a person says Game Boy with 10 games and one or two of them are Pokemon games and they didn't include that in the title. And that means less people know about it. So you have less competition and you're more likely to win a bid. Okay. And when you're looking at the bidding system, you have a choice of like sniping. That's a, a, a strategy that works if you're trying to just get individual items. But for me, what I find is more effective as a way of bidding to acquire items is that I will just bid my max, I'll know what my price is, and then just bid it and use a couple pennies more. So like if, say that I, I knew I, I find $80 of value in something, then I would bid like $81.23 or something like that. You, you, don't, you always want to go a little bit above base metrics, like 80, 85, 82, these kind of numbers, because this is what people tend to bid in. They tend to bid in integers like that. So what you want to do is offer an amount that's a little bit more than that. So if they bid something close to you, because you're adding a little bit more, even though it's pennies, your bid's still going to win, right? So we could get into how the bidding system works and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just saying this because you don't need to snipe. You don't need to pay that much attention. I just know how much I can, uh, what my rate is to buy something. Basically, I'll pay like $20 for a Pokemon game and $40 for a Game Boy, including shipping costs. and that's that's not exactly it because Pokemon games vary a bit more than that, but that's a general rule of thumb for me, right? So if I see a game like this, there's 10 games, I don't care about any of them, but there's one Pokemon game and one Game Boy, then I'm going to do $20 plus $40. Okay, my bid's 60 bucks. It's just math. I just do that over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then you want to try starting off too low and you're, you're not winning the auctions and then just increase it. But one of the advantages to bidding before the auction ends is it makes the auction less appealing because people have an innate appeal to seeing a low number as the current bid for the auction. It's going to increase the search ranking of the listing. So by bidding in the very beginning, your max that you're going to do, this increases that number. So it lowers the effect of that feeling. Imagine you're looking at $200 of value, and it ends in two days, and the current bid is $4. How do you feel about that? Well, you feel that way, and a fuckload of other people feel that way too. So you really want to bid higher, because then, in the, in the early on, because it's going to reduce the amount of people who are drawn to the listing. And ultimately, it's a competition game with auctions. You are literally bidding against other competitors, other people who want to buy it. And if you have more competitors, you pay more. That is how it works. So what you need to do is figure out 
how can you put yourself in situations where you have less competition for various reasons? And one of those reasons is learning how SEO works on eBay and being able to identify situations where there's a chance that the item of value isn't communicated properly. So it's not clear, but you know that it is contained, right? So let's try and find some examples of this here. I'm going to look at auctions because this whole system I'm talking to you about is about how to source stuff. And really, with you can do it a bit with best offer. Um, like if you send out 10 best offers and every single one of them is for like a fifth or a quarter less than what they're asking for, like maybe one of them gets accepted. But you will find that occasionally one person accepts a really low rate that just makes it very worth it. Um, whereas most of the time, your best offer is a lot of getting rejected and people wanting to pay just like $5 less than what they're asking for. Um, so don't fuss about it too much. But I'm just going to get into auctions, right? So you can see here we have another default title. Doesn't include the game, but this isn't a valuable game, so that doesn't matter here, right? Um, I'm actually going to filter this search because I don't want to look at stuff that's coming from Europe. I just want to look at stuff that's going from the North American continent. Hmm. Interesting. Here we go. North America. And I'm searching for DMG01, and the reason I'm doing this is because it's a bit more technical, um, and I've found that searching for this keyword, I find Game Boys that aren't SEO'd as well, but that is up to debate. You could also just search for Nintendo Game Boy. The problem is there's so many other Game Boys, and I specifically want to look at this kind. So the other search term I'll use sometimes is original Game Boy, that one. Um, if you don't put original in there, you get a, a lot of Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Pocket, all this kind of stuff. And for right now, that's not what I care about at all. And I'll get more into the history of why I, I do this kind of stuff with Game Boys and how it is that I'm able to pursue this again, even though I'm living in Nicaragua. And uh, yeah, basically my friends helping me out and dealing with physical fulfillment. So let's see now what we're looking for. This might be a valuable game. So the Donkey Donkey Kong's a pretty good game. This also has Mega Man. Um, and they're making that kind of mistake, you know, where you see that they say the kind of Game Boy, but there's nothing in the title to indicate that this comes with games. And four of these games are irrelevant. Mega Man's like 10 bucks. Donkey Kong Land is like 15, 20. It might be less than that. But the, these two games, Mega Man and Donkey Kong, are the valuable ones. So in my head, um, this is a color Game Boy, so I'd pay like $5 more than my typical rate, so I'd pay 45 bucks, And then each game, like I just perceive it as what it's worth. Really, if you're reselling it, you have to sell it for more to make a profit, right? Because we're paying eBay fees and all sorts of other stuff. So don't think that I'm just like profiting on the games. The games are something that I can add to a Game Boy listing that make it playable when the person receives it. So I can increase its value and use the game to inflate it in a buy it now listing. So I, I don't ever sell the Game Boys in auction because in auction they tend to sell for less than their value unless you're able to bring traffic to that auction of, of uh, buyers who are going to compete with each other. And usually you're only able to do that if you're in like an influencing situation. So I would offer uh, 45, 10, 10. I would offer 65 as my bid, right? So you can see here that this is actually out of my threshold already because the shipping is $10 and the current bid is 62. So that means the current price is $72. And that's more than the value I perceive. Whereas someone else buying this might own a retro game store or something where they can sell, like they have a minimum price of $5 for all of their generic games or something like that. And they run sales where you can get 10 or 15 of them for three bucks a piece. And they're able to turn the games around because they have interested clients coming into their physical location where they can just pay more for that convenience. Like there's tons and tons of uh, outlets that exist like this and they source 
retro content off of the internet from places like eBay, and then they resell it in person for like two or three times what they purchase it from. And they can sell it for more than the value of the item on eBay. Even though their customers could just order stuff on eBay for cheaper, they will still buy it if they set their business up right and they're really good to their customers. And you know, There's ways to, to get people to be happy and pay more. Like you can do that. It's not. It's not a direct trade. Just because you're paying more doesn't mean you're 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 lying to your customers or something, right? So let's see. Uh, this this is an interesting one because they again use a default title. For some reason, they put that it includes the video game in the subtitle, which is funny because that doesn't get searched the same way, and they had to pay to have a subtitle. <laughs> So it would have been much better if they just put that this comes with the video game in their main title, but whatever. And so you can see if you look at the last photo here, there's a game, it's kind of beat up. But these are the kind of situations where you find value, like especially if the first photo doesn't show everything. That's another mistake that sellers make. They'll have a lot like this, but the first photo just shows the Game Boy. Like imagine if, Whereas an individual photo. Imagine if this was the first photo and this was the title. Nintendo Game Boy Black tested DMG Game Boy good condition. There is nothing in the photo or nothing in the title to lead you to think that there's other stuff here. Right? So you can see that there is by looking further into the listing, but that's the moment that indicates you might be able to get it for less than its actual value. And what you really want is when there's inaccuracy in the title and in the photo and in the description, but you are confident that something is being sold together for whatever reason. And sometimes you take risks and it's not true, but unfortunately eBay enables you to just be like, hey, you weren't clear about this, return it. And like, I don't really do that because I love the Game Boy stuff. I, I, I always feel happy about when people ship me Game Boys and even if they're broken, I just like learn how to fix them and I don't ever fuck with that but you absolutely can on eBay it's kind of messy right again we have another example of the default titles here you can see how common that is and in the beginning when I was sourcing these um I'll get more into the business model part soon because I think now you guys are understanding like in general there's there's ways that you can identify listings where sellers are messing up and they're, they've reduced their SEO, so therefore they've reduced the access that your competition has. Therefore, there's going to be less competitors looking at that item. So you're more likely to be able to get it for less than its value. Um, recently, I've made some purchases with this mentality, and I was able to get a copy of Pokemon Yellow almost, almost completely free. Basically, I paid $64 or $65, including tax. I always forget sales taxes afterwards. Um, $65, and the listing was for a Game Boy that I, I value at 40 bucks. right? I'll buy them for 40 including shipping. And then Pokemon Yellow and Pokemon Silver. And Pokemon Yellow is 30 bucks. Pokemon Silver is 20 bucks. The Game Boy is 40 So that is around 100 bucks of value. And I got it for like 60% of that which is really good. That's, that's the kind of situation you want to look at, is really identifying when sellers are making mistakes that's going to lead to less competition among your buyers, okay? And so now if you're watching this video and you just wanted to learn about eBay stuff, that's pretty much it. Now I'm going to talk about the Game Boy sit system and how I am, uh, what income stream I'm doing here and my history with it and a little bit of insight about why I'm doing this and some of the changes I'm making. So basically, my entry into self-employment was starting to buy Nintendo products on Craigslist and then reselling them on eBay. Um, I had a period of time where I was looking at this as a way of working, right? And realistically, it, I didn't earn that much money, but it was life-changing for me. It was really fun and really interesting. And it exposed me to hundreds and hundreds of games that I would like buy, 
for a good price. I'd find somebody who, like, their someone had gone off to college or something, and their grandparent or parent was selling all of their games, which is tragic. But I mean, I'm happy to buy it. It's definitely going to get sold. So you know, uh, there was one time that I I purchased. Um, I got I got one of these Game Boys, a Game Boy Advance, a Game Boy Color, a Nintendo Wii, a Super Nintendo, an NES, and an Xbox and a 360 for like two hundred dollars. It was obscene. Like it was really, really. It was like a third of what I could sell it for. Um, it was really awesome, and and that whole lifestyle really opened my mind to e-commerce, and. Um, I ended up getting into drop shipping and getting away from that. But one of the things that I did consistently after getting into drop shipping was I would mod these Game Boys. I would add a backlight. And what I didn't realize at the time was that the market for backlit Game Boys is incredibly tiny. I, at the peak of this, I had enough where I, I had like 10 in stock, right? And I would do that multiple times over a period of two or three years. And what I found is that at the peak of it, even having one of the listings, it was not the best Game Boy listing, but one of the better ones. Um, like you could tell looking at the competition and that kind of thing. Uh, I was selling like maybe twice a week. I think the best month I ever had was selling eight. And on average, it was two per week. And realistically, it was like four and then like none and then like three. Like they, they kind of happened in spurts, right? around the Christmas time, there was definitely more likely people were going to buy these. And what I found is that y y there's not much of a market for the backlit ones. People are actually more interested in just a good condition working regular one. And it's more profitable and less work. You can get one of these Game Boys, refurbish it, make it all pretty, replace the screen, make it a glass screen, make it more durable, sell it for double what you paid for it. And that kind of sale will happen more than if you are selling backlit Game Boys. People are more interested in the original one than a modified one that includes a backlight. That's, that's, that's just, there's literally more people who want the first thing, the base model. There's more people. And I spent three years just selling the backlit ones and occasionally selling the other kind. And it wasn't until the very end, right before I lost my first eBay account, that, boom, I realized that. And then I ended up moving to Nicaragua, right? But basically what happened is one of my very close friends um, wants to work on this with me. And he's been shipping stuff out for me when I sell stuff on Mercari. And he's been doing fulfillment services for me. And now uh, we've set up an investment and we got a bunch of Game Boys and I'm going over there whenever things settle down a bit um, to just refurbish them and prep them into these new listings that are going to be really expensive and take forever to sell. And that's what, what it is, right? It's something that is mostly like fun for me because it's a lot of information that I know a lot about now. And I've been doing it for a while because I've, I've become really comfortable with eBay. I understand how to maintain yourself on eBay and how to mitigate your risk and all this kind of stuff, right? Whereas before I, I was just brand new into eBay, I didn't understand how the platform works and some of the forces that created the platform. I didn't know about their history. I, I didn't know any of that stuff, right? Whereas now, like I have a very good understanding of how eBay works and how to get um, more value out of your usage of eBay, right? So now what I'm doing is sourcing these. Basically, I, I put like four or five hundred dollars with some help of some friends into purchasing these, and then I will stay with my friend who's doing the fulfillment for two weeks and we're going to make a bunch of the listings and do the refurbishing work and I'm going to make um, some YouTube videos because basically eBay allows you to reference YouTube videos in your listing so what I need to do is build up value I know that retro gamers like love they would definitely spend a hundred bucks on a Game Boy even if it's not modified as long as the value is built up properly and you're honest because there's going to be returns and that kind of stuff. Um, that's just part of it. But 
I know that there's the feelings, the energy, because I, I know how I am as a person who appreciates the content and how I feel looking at the Game Boys and the history and it's so interesting and fascinating. And there's so many ways that I can like put all of that emotion into a listing and make it like really embrace that energy. And it's going to be really interesting to see like, okay, I'm, I'm actually going to be able to source stuff off of eBay and sell it back on eBay and make it profitable, right? Because you, you can't just expect to buy stuff and do nothing to it aside from clean it and resell it and earn more than the fees of shipping and selling on the platform. Especially if you're doing the sponsored listing stuff, that means you're paying like 20, 30% of the price to eBay. That's ridiculous. Like no way I'm doing any sponsored listings anymore. That was one of my takeaways from drop shipping. Like I viewed eBay as like a much more responsible company in the beginning, but after all my experiences now, I see that they they are kind of a lethargic company and they're very very big and they've outsourced a lot of their inner workings and right now they're not more interested in the buyers or the sellers. They're more interested in pleasing their stockholders. And the reality is that eBay isn't maintaining its customers. It's it's losing eBay as an entity is losing interest on a global scale compared to how it used to be, right? And that's been consistent over a decade. Like that's not a new trend. It's obvious. A lot of people know about it. And this means that eBay is pleasing its stockholders by trying to make more money off of its sellers and increasing the fees on its platform. Like the whole concept of their sponsored listing system, they literally let you pick how much money, up to 100%. They literally give you the option of selling an item on their platform and giving them all of the money. And then you ship it out for them. Like they, they let you do that. Like it's like, why? That's so ridiculous, you know? And it, show, it just shows what they're trying to enable. And they're really trying to push as many fees and things onto their sellers as, as possible because they're not getting more customers. So they have to earn more money and please their like business relationships and therefore the sellers are suffering. And that's the reality of eBay. Maybe someone's going to take leadership of it and change it. But right now it's a very outsourced, very easily abused system. Um, and one of the reasons it's so easy to abuse is because uh, they have so many outsourced employees all over the world that the chance of one of these employees being in a situation where they can be financially incentivized in a meaningful way to do something to an eBay account under the cover, so to speak, it, it's not possible. It's, it's guaranteed. It's happening. Like those, those environments create that opportunity, right? It's, it's reality. Um, and it's it's just funny how in the beginning you you think like oh if I get banned on eBay it's it's over but really there's you don't have to do that much at all to keep selling on eBay you can literally get banned move your location use a different computer and a different PayPal account and you can just make a new account and you can be the same person you can be like hey I'm Jack Pittman this is who I am my, this is my name like you don't have to lie about anything it's just how their system works that won't catch you as the same person. And there's a lot of ways to abuse and mess with it. And it's so funny that so many people view losing an eBay account as something that takes them away from an opportunity, but it, it really isn't at all. It just means you, you have to maintain different accounts and you have to understand how to mitigate the risk of getting banned because it's going to happen to some people. Sometimes you're going to do something and you're going to accidentally offer international shipping and this is going to cause a violation that gets viewed as a counterfeit claim by ebay and because you enabled international shipping on a product you violated a law and got a counterfeit claim on your account like that that happens it's called parallel import violation normally right but the person who is enforcing the rule who is making the claim again against you it's just a simple checkbox. Instead of claiming parallel import violation, they can just claim you're counterfeiting. And there's not really anything you can do aside from getting a lawyer involved. Do you, like, are you really going to get a lawyer involved to, to, to threaten this person over something on eBay? That, that's what you have to do to defend yourself as a seller on eBay. Whether you are doing something uh, like unethically or not, 
it's the same for you. You get treated the same way. If you get counterfeiting claims against you, there's no effective system to prove that you're not counterfeiting. Yet eBay remains the easiest platform to buy counterfeit goods. So it's ironic because they are still facilitating the sale of counterfeit goods and you can just randomly get banned for counterfeiting even when you're not counterfeiting. And that's how their platform works. And if you get banned, you can just make a new account if you know a little bit about how the digital footprint works. And now they're even mitigating away from PayPal. So there is a chance that all the people who were banned because of PayPal stuff and they have blacklisted PayPal accounts, they're now in different houses. They have different IP addresses. They got banned like five years ago. Life's moved on. They can literally just make a new account on the new system. And there is a chance that it's treated as a new user because not all blacklisting information is necessarily used and shared um, accurately. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but this is a common occurrence when platforms make these shifts. They don't necessarily shift all of their information over. And in eBay's case, its blacklisting system was already lackluster. It's incredibly easy to abuse. If you have one virtual assistant who makes a mistake, right? And they work for 10 clients. And that virtual assistant logs into every one of those 10 clients with their same IP address. This causes a link, which isn't going to cause any problems. But then give it another month or two, and boom, this VA, for whatever reason, doesn't pay their eBay bill. Guess what happens to every single linked account? It gets suspended. And you have to prove that you're not the same person. And eBay is in the full right to just be like, no, screw you. There, there is, even if they want, don't, even if you are innocent, in that scenario, eBay historically has retained the suspensions. They've also lifted them randomly. And that's another huge inconsistency about the company. You can have a problem, call a rep, get one answer, hang up, call again, and get a different answer. You can literally just bugger people and keep calling until you get an answer you like. It's ridiculous. And it's not how a system should work. And their phone lines have been, the whole system is different now because of COVID. Um, I don't know if this is still true, but there wasn't any phone support at all for a period of time. Maybe eBay's opened that up again. I'm not sure. I also wouldn't be surprised if they just never open it up again. Like that's the kind of moves eBay makes as a company. Um, it, it makes things in the interests of lessening its current expenditures. And if its sellers and buyers are hurt by this, it's okay. That's that's the trend. You know, that's normal. All right, guys, that's it. I hope this was an informative video. I just wanted to update you guys about some stuff with the Game Boys, some other income stream strategies and all that kind of thing. If you want to learn more about any kind of online earning or changing your location, something called location hacking, as some people say, right? I live in Nicaragua and money online, money goes away further, life's easier, right? There's tons of ways to do this. I offer consulting if you want to talk. Uh, the first session is free. It's 30 minutes. Every 30-minute session after that is $20, okay? So some people prefer to just do like a weekly session where we just talk and help kind of be help you be more accountable and focus more. Sometimes there's so many opportunities, it can be hard to identify which ones we need to put our time into. And sometimes we struggle with what we actually do and what we want to do. And these are all things I can help you with. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.